Okay, good morning, Dee. How are you today? Fine, fine, thank you. Good. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to um, have a chat with me today um, about your experience as a, an early adopter school. Um, I know we've got a, a number of schools in Lancashire who chose to be early adopters. Uh, I'm not quite sure it's been the experience they thought it was going to be. So uh, maybe you can um, share some of your thoughts in this sort of little chat that we're going to have. So just to start off, just tell me briefly um, about your experience uh, as a, an early adopter school. OK, so obviously we signed up to be um, early adopters before pre-COVID um, and that kind of changed the, the way that things worked a bit when we were trying to find out about the new framework and the development matters, but um, just meant that I had to do a bit, a bit more research and um, a bit more difficult to talk to people about it. But um, I found things online that helped and, and that, um, you know, sort of paved the way forward for, for the changes that I needed to make. Yeah, so you, you um, did you find that you got um, a lot of help and support? Um, you know, did you have to find the... the no, it was, re yeah, it was really on... on um, on myself to to go out and find that um, there wasn't a lot sent via the government. Um, I did find um, the Foundation Years website really helpful. Yeah. So there were lots of um, vlogcasts on there um, that sort of explained the changes and, and talked over those and and things that that I needed to think about. Um, and also, um, I did end up going into Twinkle a little bit because they'd kind of got together yeah. as a company and. Um, picked out sort of looked at the things that were staying the same and the things that were different um, on kind of one sheet of paper or a couple yeah, of sheets of paper just, just to really pull out the the main um, the main things that I needed to think about. Yeah yeah and I think as a local authority we've you know had to try and find out bits of information and read things so yeah I, th I think we've been on this journey with you a little bit but yeah. obviously in practice you've been doing that in school. So okay so have there been, so on the back of, of you know, as you started off this year, um, have there been any changes that you've made this year? So, for example, in relation to the curriculum, the way that you've organised your provision, the role of the adults, have you made any changes or has that been a journey and you've made changes as you've gone along the way? What, what's yeah, it's, it, it's kind of been a journey. Um, I think that the main, the first thing that I really looked at or the thing that jumped out when I read the document was really putting that, which was a real good thing for me because it's what we've all been wanting is really prioritizing those adult child interactions and that being the priority within the classroom, not the creating amazing paper learning journeys for everybody. Um, so we used, we did do individual learning journeys, um, which had been workload wise was just huge. They were beautiful, but yeah. um, you know, we had to think, did what purpose were they serving? They were a lovely document for parents to keep uh, for the future, but it was really thinking, is that the best way? Um, and is that the best use of our time in making the, the best outcomes for those children? So we decided to go to um, group learning journeys. So we have a learning journey now for each key worker group, um, 10 children per learning journey. We have an English book and a maths book, um, but everything else, all the other uh, learning is documented within there. Um, and that's re it really has made a massive difference to the amount of time that we've got doing those quality interactions and it's reflected in just in the way the children are, are in class and um, yeah our knowledge of the children because you're spending so much more time with them and doing the you know moving things on in their learning um, you know in yeah. every minute kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. That's one thing that I feel sort of quite um, excited about in relation mm. to the new framework is that actually it's it's releasing stuff to to spend more time interacting rather than having that pressure of taking photographs, yeah. making notes, remembering yeah. what children have said and what yeah. they need to write down. Yeah. I think there you look like you've got a bit of a compromise there. So you've not yeah. sort of just said we're not going to keep any evidence, but by doing your group learning journeys, you feel that that you've actually still got some evidence there and that works for you and I think yeah. that's the thing isn't it about the new yeah. framework it's it's a school's decision to do whatever works best for yeah for you 
Yeah, I think it, it's an important thing, you know, when you're having those those conversations with with staff and you come in towards judgments and things like that yes um you know a lot of that knowledge is is within um within your your head and that yeah. you can talk about those children you've had those really quality interactions with them gathering that information but you've also got the the learning journey to get out and say look look at that piece of evidence look at yeah. that journey that we've gone on yeah. um to really back up those and and almost stimulate those conversations between yeah and they're, they're and a lovely the lovely thing to be able to chat to the children about and obviously share with parents yeah, yeah they love like getting those yeah, out, yeah that sounds great yeah. what about your curriculum you know in terms of, of your, your curriculum has, has that changed has that evolved are you uh, there have been some some little tweaks just make um prioritizing um different areas and making sure the children are get up, getting the opportunity to experience um, the things that they're perhaps going to be judged on at the end of the year. So yeah. just uh, we were quite lucky. Our curriculum was already geared towards a lot of the, the things that have got a higher profile within yeah. the new framework. Um, so it, it was only small things. Um, I'm trying to think yeah, so. you felt you had that curriculum coverage there already. Yeah, we definitely yeah. have. Um, change the environment and the where the children work within the environment a lot of um, you know the areas in the classroom are still evident yeah. but yeah. there's a lot more movement of resources movement you know lots making sure that that literacy and maths is within all the areas yeah. right. um, uh, but also I think um, a, for me a, a big part of the framework is the change particularly for higher up the school is um, the things like the history, the geography, the science, whilst they're not labelled that, they are a bit more explicit in the new framework. Yeah. The links can be seen a lot clear, yeah. more clearly. And I've had a lot of, um, you know, one of our sort of whole school targets is for uh, subject leaders to to know what their subject looks like within early years. And I think it's the way we've got it set up. It's slightly easier for them to see that now. Great. So would you suggest sort of one of the things for future, and I'm going to come on to that question in a minute, but it, that it would be a good idea to involve um, subject leaders? In, definitely, in, definitely. In I think you've got, you've got to have that whole school approach that yeah. early years isn't something completely separate, that yeah. we are trying to see that journey right from early years up to year six. So just having those subject leaders aware of those links and and what their subject looks like in early years is really yeah, it's understanding what those skills knowledge and concepts look yeah. like yeah. in sort of historical development or geogra exactly. geographical development that actually yeah. it doesn't just start when the children get to year one that some of those experiences you're absolutely providing aren't you within yeah within the reception classroom yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. okay so there's lots of questions and you might not be able to answer this because you might not have, have actually sort of found a way through yet yourselves. Mm -hmm. But there's lots, we're getting asked lots of questions about data yeah. and about tracking because obviously currently we use um, the everybody else who's not early adopter scores are using the development matters bands to track children mm -hmm. towards that early learning goal and the, the real message is that that we we won't be able to do that anymore the development matters has not been set up in in such a way so i know we are getting lots of questions about that so is, have you got any sort of advice or anything that you've done this year that that might yeah um, so i mean people? this year it's a, it is a huge um challenge to think yeah. to sort of reinvent the way that you record and track children and there's still going to be a need to record and track that progress to produce some data for, for you know for for other people to to look at really um this year we've had to kind of stick with um quite a similar approach just because you can't suddenly reinvent it all at once so um yeah, yeah. We've we've just relabeled the the age bands in the years and still had an emerging, developing, secure right. um, judgment within that. But looking forward, that's really on my my list of priorities. Is hopefully working with um, another local school, with Whitefield School, to come up with sort of put all our heads together and start to sort of feel a way through to what yeah. would be the best way to to come up with that judgment, but also that it would impact progress and you know it, it's measured it's kind of 
balancing all those things. And I don't think that's something that I could come up with individually. I think it needs more heads uh, together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. And I think this is a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for schools moving forward. You know, this idea of being children are being on track or not on track um, around, you know, what do we mean by on track and not on track? What does it mean for you as a school? Um, What does it mean for the school down the road? Um, You know, what are your so, you know, some of the reading that I've done, it's very much about uh, from Ofsted and from um, the development matters is very much about, you know, uh, us making um, the decisions about what we want the children to learn. Mm. You know, where do our children come in? What do we want them to learn? Obviously, keeping our eye on that early learning goal, particularly yeah. in inception, but actually that coming from us. Um, mm. And and that's those sorts of decisions are not going to come overnight. So even though you've been on this journey, you're still on this journey, aren't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sort of moving forward into into September. But that's nice to hear that you having that opportunity to share those conversations with your senior leaders and um and and other schools um, as well because obviously it's a really important um for senior leaders to to have obviously that understanding of how things might change and and obviously supporting you in the classroom as well yeah so you know there is I don't think there is an answer is it at the moment no and I think that, that's the thing you can't change everything in one year so it's just having a, a structure making sure you're having those conversations yeah. and, a way, and planning that way forward of of when you know that tracking system or whatever we, we it evolves into yeah. um that you've got a journey set out that yeah that's aiming yeah. towards something yeah absolutely and I think one of our messages to schools is that you know that that maybe now that schools are attending some training or reading materials um and just getting themselves familiar with the new statutory framework but that actually not everything has to be ready and in place for September it yeah. is the journey yeah. is, is there any other bits of advice that you would give to to a school um, I think it, you know, it, it's not September? not panicking not throwing out what you're already doing that's really good you know really valuing you know as a practitioner which bits are are working don't feel pressure to change everything all at once it should be a gradual thing and a lot of things don't need to change yeah Um, valuing what you know works for you and your children but being mindful of the changes and seeing how you can adapt that into your practice and yeah absolutely and I think you know I think that's uh, you know a lot of the things that the messages that we're trying to give to schools as well is that you know it just make sure that you know your preparation is having meetings making sure that you chat with your senior leaders you chat with your support staff you make sure that everybody's aware of you know the changes in the educational programs changes in the development matters and just make sure that people are as prepared prepared as they can to start that journey rather than you know just waiting to September and having yeah. no knowledge yeah. um and then obviously you know and, and I think you know maybe setting up links with other schools would be a lovely idea to for you know as a suggestion for other schools to to go along that journey with somebody yeah. else even though schools are different that doesn't yeah. really matter I don't think to say no no, no. Any, any materials that you've read, anything particular that you, you've watched or any, and you mentioned Foundation Years before, did you find that website particularly useful? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was, there was loads of stuff on that and it really quality things that you can ask your, you know, support staff to sit and watch yeah. with you or um, in time that you managed to give them, um, just really highlighting the key messages from from the changes. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I must admit, um, I found... <laughs> <laughs> that. no that's fine um i i found uh, it's real isn't it you're in a school <laughs> um i found you know some of the the videos um and the vodcasts and things like that really useful for me as well as the reading it's quite nice to listen and that's why we wanted to do yeah. um these interviews today just to get you know a real sort of perspective um so is there anything else that from this year any bit of advice anything that you feel um that that you could um you know offer to schools or anything that you feel in terms of the experience you, yourself um just uh, you know maintaining those characteristics of effective learning and um, i've produced the sh- this sheet i don't know if you can see it all oh, right okay it's got the early learning goals on but it's got all the characteristics along the bottom as well and it's quite a nice 
um, thing for, for support staff as well, just to keep that in mind that those characteristics are, you know, as prominent um, in the new framework. And I think they're um, explained in a, a clearer way almost, you know, I, I found there's a lot more meat in there about those. Yeah, yeah, the development matters, the, the characteristics in the new development matters, it's it's set out slightly differently, yeah. isn't it? And some of the um, the way that it's explained mm -hmm. um, is not, it's, it's not it, it's different isn't it like so yeah, a little yeah. bit more a little bit more meat on the bones in yeah, terms of that. yeah. So how are you how did you feel just sort of one last question how do you feel about um the new development matters and have you had a little look sorry i'm just just a, a question that come into mm. my head have you looked at the birth to five matters or have you yeah. just stuck with the development matters um i've stuck mainly with the development matters yeah. um yeah I, I, I think in, it's hard to say, but the changes, um, I think we got so used to using development yeah. matters yeah. and yeah. quite liked the process yeah. of yeah. Yeah. all that, that list of statements and moving through it and um, that the new development matter seems a lot more, whilst it, it does focus in on more of the priorities yeah. for those, those age ranges, it also seems a bit more open to yeah. interpretation. Yeah. yeah, and I think from, yeah. from, again, from what I've been reading as well, I think they've done that on purpose because it's really about understanding child development. I think you're absolutely right. There are key points in there so that, you know, so you, you've got those checkpoints, you've got some of those things to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously, if children are falling behind, um, then obviously you, you've got those those sort of checkpoints to, to to have a little look at, haven't you? Yeah. And just see, you know, what what you need to do. But I think, for me, I think there's going to be a lot more emphasis on that understanding of child development. And I think, you know, as an experienced practitioner, I guess a lot of that just comes quite natural to you yeah. as well. You know, you've been doing, you know, you've been working in early years for a while, and, yeah. and you automatically, in some ways, know those next steps. So if you're not sure you've got the document there to go yeah and, and have a look at um yeah. I still think I still think I've got a lot to learn about that document and yes, about yeah. picking that document and really get into to the grips with what it means for yeah, the way that yeah. I practice so yeah yeah, yeah I think absolutely I mean we've got used to like you said before we've got used to the band and the development yeah. matters and and how we progress that and how we use that so yeah it, it's a big change um can I just say thank you? Um, it's really difficult, isn't it, to, to do these little videos, but I find that that really, really useful, Dee. So, thank you so, so much. You. Um, and obviously, you know, when we share these videos with schools, I'm sure that they'll find that really useful as well. Thank you, so thank I'm you. going to say thank you very much and um, take care and, and go back to your classroom and enjoy your children. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>